meeting to order at 6.08 p.m. on January 8th. We're going to start off with amendments to the agenda, and I'll just let Mike go ahead and... Uh, yeah, I have three. The first amendment is uh, from Bernard. It's about uh, um, the Old Town Clerk's building. The second amendment, I, I'd like to get the board to um, at least agree in principle to a Lister's budget, and also the zoning budget, and also the town clerk's budget. Yep. So it's four amendments. Okay, so let's go ahead and move those. Um, we wanted to get Dylan in here. He was. Oh yeah, and Dylan. Let's get Dylan first. Right. So, we can get out so let's start moving that stuff around. So, and is Bernard here, or do we no, know why he, Dylan's here? Yes. Okay. So why don't we start with Dylan, and then what I'll do is we'll throw this other stuff around the schedule because I think we should do the budget, budget, budget stuff. That's on your number nine. After we. Yeah. So we could just put it in number nine. Sure. Right? And then so that leaves Dylan first, Bernard second for amendments to the agenda that we'll do now, and then we'll move to amendments. Sounds great. Or right, excuse me, approve the minutes. Yeah. Is that all right with everyone? Yes. Okay, so first is Dylan. Dylan, thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, I just jotted down a few things here. One of the things that I'm gonna work on is have uh, Allison help us with a new build a new timesheet, kind of break down um, like uh, to charge things to maintenance or plowing or class three road. <coughs> sure. So we can track our costs better, figure out where we're spending the most money, what we're spending the most money on. Uh, so that was one thing. Uh, another one was we wanted to look at options for our sand screen. It's not in very good shape. It's like I've got it toggled together so we can use it. <clears throat> I think we can get the rest of the year out of it, but it's like, you know, we're just making it work right now. I don't know if we can overhaul it in the spring uh, or, or look at what other towns have done for replacing them. I, I don't really know. Okay. Um, I'll take a drive by Elmore's because it's just sitting right there at the bottom of my road. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the tag along trailer that we've got too, I guess I haven't looked at it at all. We haven't had any time. We need to get that in as well. Look at that. See if it's worth fixing or replacing. I think that's the one where Lucian said they sawed a hole or they just banged uh, the excavator through, went through, through the, the wood in order to so probably, it would, so probably it would hold. a new deck and you know yep. brakes. I don't know if the brakes are all seized out. Okay. Right, because the trailer have brakes. Once we get a free minute, we'll get it in and we'll yeah. get all over and figure out what we got to do. It's Is that the one we just bought? Spring, you know, to move the little excavator. Uh, you know, Lucian to told to us do about. Do you think, in your opinion, that we should add some money to the budget for? that specifically but well, we can look at that offline yep okay. yep that yeah. could be that could be is that the one we just bought no that's the one with okay. our excavator on it okay um it was the excavator was put through the floorboard and what one of the floorboards was rubbing against the exposed right. piston the bucket wouldn't stay they wouldn't okay. instead tying the bucket down they just jammed a hole through but it's not the low boy or you don't we don't even have a low boy we used someone else's correct yeah yeah i believe okay cool well thanks dylan yeah um Salt, we bought so far 189 ton. We have probably 70 ton on reserve right now. So I'd say that we're doing pretty good on that. We've got 300 in the budget. Uh, the crew is doing good. We're working together and learning together. We've got our hiccups, but we're managing. Nice. Learning. Is there um, anything the board can do to help you? I don't think so. I think we'll just keep plugging along and we'll keep getting better. Awesome. I've, I've heard a lot about your improvements. Um, up on the pond road, someone did mention a pothole. Um, I think it's just before Douglas Road on this side of town. It's getting pretty big. Is that, that's roughly where it is, right? You'll know it when you see it. It's on, it's on the, uh, you know, the Elmore side, not the Route 15 side of the pond road. So you get yeah. up top. Douglas is up here. It's right before it on the, your left as you're driving towards Elmore. Okay. It's getting pretty big. Okay. I've had a couple of neighbors just mention it to me. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. All right. Anything else right now? Dylan or the highway department? Do we anticipate any issues with all the rain this weekend that they're expecting? Probably going to be icy. Other than that, though, 50 degrees and pouring rain is going to be a little rough for a couple of days. Yeah. Um, Everybody has your number that needs it. 
Uh, the only thing I would ask about is um, the salt. Sometimes that turns into the, a commodity. So if we have room for it, should we order it sooner than later and try and get? I have that. I've okay. Been keeping it. Cool. I've been keeping a good, a good. Okay, because one year we ended up having to wait. And yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to keep a good bit of it on hand right, so great. we don't run into that. Great, because that comes in on a train, so it only it's one train that serves everybody. <laughs> so you know, it's hard to borrow from neighbors at that point. Uh, great. All right, last call. Anything else for Dylan or the Highway Department? I don't think so. Thank you. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you very much. Get some sleep, guys. Thank Go you. for it. Go for it. Yeah, you'll be up in the morning. Um, all right, so what we'll do is we'll do Bernard next, and then we're going to move Mike's budget items down to number nine. Okay. So Bernard called me today and um, had an interesting story about some goings on at the Old Town Clerk's Office, which is Leonard Preston's building, which has all the junk in it. Oh, and we've been uh, Percy. Or Percy. Uh, Leonard, is it Percy? Maybe it's Percy. I think it's Percy because they're, they're on tax. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it is Percy, yeah. And uh, it's for tax sale, right? It's up for tax sale. Uh, but apparently, in the deed, when the town sold him the house, the town's on the hook for the water to the neighbor's mm -hmm. house. Yeah. You're aware of this. Because they're connected. Yeah. Yeah, it goes and through. And it's the town's responsibility. And Mr. Percy turned off the heat and all the pipes froze. They froze, yeah. And Manash had to go. Oh, yeah. That's how and we had to go. This. Yeah. yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, Bernard did mention this to me. So Manash had to come out, and it cost us 800 bucks. Yeah. What you might want to do is shut it off in the town hall. Because that's where it goes first. Into the town hall, then. But will that cut off the, the piggyback house? Yeah, that would cut off the water to the yellow house, right? Yes, you might Yeah. Know. Which we can't do. Right. But you can bypass the old. Yeah. So he said that um, uh, he's looked into rerouting it. He can't route it out back because of the septic. He looked, in it, he looked at it with Nick, mm -hmm. apparently. Mm -hmm. um, and going through the front wall needs a bunch of permits, so there's no easy answer. Um, it looks like we're going to be stuck with this $800 and then, I don't know, have to deal, deal with it at the tax sale. Yeah, can we attach it as a lien to the deed? Yeah, that's not my area of expertise. I it is something know. you want to look into separating, though sooner rather than later or yeah. you're right gonna, and you're it's not like to have yeah we issue. don't want to have to wait till we're buying this at tax sale to be yeah. able to fix this problem yeah can um, we get permission from him to go in there and i don't know i believe you won't allow that it, can you even get in there well that's the thing it would just go to end up to tax sale which is where it's been in and we've we've given them every chance to get out of it and it's still there um, so maybe it makes sense to ping the lawyer and get some legal advice. Um, yeah, that is probably the best place to start. All right. Um, sure. Deb, if you'd like to do an action, I'm, I'll go ahead and I'll try that. Okay. And that's the Tournageau slash um, Piercy. Yeah. And here are my notes on it. If you need a refresher, um, Bernard said give him a call if anybody has any questions. Um, he's dealing with a car issue, so he couldn't be here. Okay. Great. All right. So that's that, and that's that. That should be it for amendments to the agenda. Um, There's one other, I believe I stuck a... Oh, right. Oh, sorry, the tax attorney. Um, so Linda received an offer from someone from Barton, Vermont. Um, and what he would do is uh, do tax sales in the area... So the law allows for 15% and um, someone who Linda had spoken to won an hourly rate. So she reached out to other people. This person says that he would not be charging the town for any additional cost. I'm asking that you agree to hire him. I would like you to get right on the tax sale, which is a few months behind due to lack of attorney. And uh, this is a letter from Mr. William Boyd Davies. Um, from Maine Davies in Barton, Vermont, and Happy New Year, blah, 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 a bunch of... Is that, is that, um, can we ask him about the question about this, if we hire him? Uh, well, that's a good question, because we do have, um, 
This property, what you're talking about on Route 15, does hover around tax sale, but it's not in it yet. Right. So this is an attorney we would hire represents for all of the tax sales. So when we come up with that list. You'd want to ask Dave Polo. Uh, Dave Polo. He's the one that's dealing Or no, actually, um, well, or Dave Polo's Sergeant? kind of our town attorney, but we're dealing with Tim Sargent for the eviction. So. You could deal with either one of them. Yeah. Um, so in this particular case, this is someone who would focus on the tax sales. He's interested in doing the tax sales for the town of Wilkett. There would be no additional cost to the town because I never charge more than the statutes allowed to be charged to the taxpayer. Um, so Linda's asking us to hire him. Uh, unless anyone else has any other discussion, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to hire Mr. So would uh, they, he'd take over for Sergeant and the other guy? Well, Sergeant doesn't Just do him anymore, so we needed Dick to find Sergeant someone. Dick Sergeant used to do the tax right, sale so for, he retired, for years and, and years, Tim's and he retired. And Tim doesn't do him. No. no. Um, so we're in need of an attorney. Somebody. Yeah. Yep. And you actually missed one, I believe. All right, so I'll make a motion to go ahead and hire Mr. William Boyd Davies to be the attorney that represents for tax sales. I'll second the motion. Uh, that's by Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Perfect. So this is my pile for the fold that stays. <laughs> All right, so next we're going to move on. Perfect. That lines us up with the amendments. Next we're going to move on to um, minutes um, of December 11th, 2019. Um, this was a meeting in which uh, Kim and Richard weren't at. No. Oh. Or Richard and December Jen weren't 11th. at. We, we, yeah, the December 11th. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was the first at the one. 11th. Richard and Jen weren't at the. Okay, 11th. so Richard and Jen were not there. So, Mike, we weren't able to have a, a quorum. Because I wasn't here last meeting. In order to get the minutes approved. Right. Right. So we have to still approve the minutes from the 11th, which I read and I approved at the time, but no one else could approve them. With which ones were the? I'm sorry, I, I have. I, I have. I, I should can't have. read it. I had an amendment to one, but I can't see it to tell you. I can't see it. <laughs> which meeting? Uh, is yeah, it? hold it close. Which, that's what away. I'm trying to figure out. Is which meeting it was? Okay, this is the one I think. This is, was this the auditor's meeting? No, that was the meeting before, but if you have an amendment to that. Isn't it? Was that? I don't know offhand. I'm this is the minutes about the auditor. Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't have one here for some reason. Yes, yeah. Sorry. Deb, I'll take a, I'll take a copy of those too if, if you don't mind. Or I'll take these. I'll keep so these. So my only amendment to that meeting, to, or to those minutes, yep. was that I thought that the... Um, error that the auditor mentioned should be in the minutes. She did. We, I thought we had it in the minutes. Yeah. It's okay, so maybe I missed it. It's in there. Because I was no, in, no I don't believe it is. But it was in the I draft. Yeah, I, I have the old draft. Oh, it said it was noted that some paychecks had been issued to employees there before the so board could approve yours. It doesn't really. It doesn't really say that that was like the red flag that she called it out to be, though. Is that sort of? Yeah, I just thought for transparent reasons, we right? Should, we should because it was have it state what the auditor had. I mean, for I think she issue. said egregious at the time. <clears throat> um, right. So I would say you'd have to go back and listen to how she how she worded it. Yeah, it was in order more to correct it. Well, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, can't see, but you can hear. I know I can't see anything. I apologize. Do you want to? Do you want to? I just don't know how. Okay. To would, go about it. I you? mean, I think it needs to be amended to state what she said. As per how her, she said it. Yep. As, as her presentation. Okay. Is what I think, but. Okay. Is that okay, Deb? All right, thanks. So we'll just table the 11th. Deb will listen to the tapes. So we'll retable the table. To include the auditor's comments. Yep, retable the table. Perfect. All right, so then that means we can move on uh, to the 18th, um, which I read and I didn't, I didn't seem to find any errors. Oh, you know what I did see, Deb, which I don't think made it onto the agenda, is this, um, the rail trail letter. Was that supposed to be distributed to us? 
Remember we got that letter from the attorney who wanted us to sign on to agree to do the rail trail thing and I I was a little bit concerned because yeah. I'd never read it before and I didn't want to make a motion. The action item was for you to email the lawyer and get more information. Okay, so I definitely didn't do that. So Deb, an action item for Eric to email Hans Husey from MSK Attorneys in Burlington for more um, information in the letter. Yeah, I definitely didn't do that. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, great. I don't think that's such a pressing need, so. All right, so that being said, does anyone else have any comments or concerns regarding the minutes from the December 18th? Wonderful. I just want to um, point out to everyone that the January meeting dates are the 2nd and 4th Wednesday. So our next meeting is the 22nd. That's how the meeting, uh, the minutes have it. So it's not the 2nd and 3rd, it's the 2nd and 4th Wednesdays of this month. I just want to make sure everyone's clear on that. Yeah, Deb and I were just talking about that. And given that, and given that our budget is due the 29th or the 28th, I guess, we're going to probably need a special meeting this coming Wednesday. Okay. From today. So let's bump that discussion down to number nine, though. All right. All right. Uh, so that being said, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for December 18th, 2019. I'll second the motion. All right. Thank you, Richard. Deb, do you think maybe in the future we can um, just put the action items at the bottom of the minutes? Or I guess not. No, I just, I, I hate that I missed those action items, so I can't wait to see what else. All right, so motion made by Eric, second by Richard. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, perfect. Deb, I'm going to recuse. I wasn't here. So. That works. Thank you, Kim. All right, moving on now. So historic preservation. Um, Chad Roy's in the other room at a meeting. So Linda Brady's here. Linda. So Chad forwarded the budget that had been proposed. Um, and again, with the idea being that the, um, the town does have a plan for historic preservation. So with that in mind, we recommend that the town form a historic preservation commission and that would be a requirement for this certified local government which would access that committee to more funds for preservation however the committee and the select board chose to use that so the recommendation for the budget you have a copy in front of you um, and i also am attaching two emails that i have because i had spoken with jenna from preservation trust Back in August, in July 24th, she came and we did a walkthrough of the old building. And that's when she told me about the Preservation Trust matching funds. So I have a letter confirming that information from that date. And then I have an August 1st email from Jenna stating that we had been approved by the Preservation Trust for those structural assessment. It's $1,000 and they, supply, they, through this matching fund, would give $500. So that's the other reason there's a 500 for the budget for that. And then the section two of the stage two of the um, assessment, if we went that direction, would be the engineer's report, which would be an additional 1,000 total and 500 matching. So that was the reason for that. And yeah. then, the, I, again, the idea being to, that the town would start um, um, a preservation commission and then the budget stated on the form to go through that and matching grants because we have to have the matching to apply for many of the grants. So that's about it. Do you um, know if anybody would be interested in being on the commission? Do you have? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. If that was the case, we can just look at it and see what we can come up with. Yeah. Okay. And it's on the back of that really. Yeah. Yep. But so I'm we got the approved confirmation, the, yeah. We got approved for the structural assessment, but not the structural engineer report yet. No, that is actually agreed. If we choose to go and have that done at this time or after the original so they're both first, approved. they're both approved. Yeah. And that's why I included the emails because it's been since August since we had spoken. Yep, so here it has in August says it says PTV has approved your request for a structural assessment. And Bob Neal of Engineering Ventures has agreed to do a report. Confirmation. 
um, that a confirmation is provided and will be needed for the town. And at that time, we were not prepared to move forward, so I contacted her and said we're on hold for a while. So when we were talking before, we, you, you and Chad had the idea to get an appropriation line item put in the budget. Yes, and that's what the budget was But we're not, are, we're proposing $9,500 as an appropriation. Sir. <laughs> Anybody from the select board ever been over in that schoolhouse to under it? Yeah. I was not allowed under it. Because it was, oh, too, it was too dangerous. So, do you know how bad it is? Yeah. And do you know that if you get historic preservation and grants and money to restore that building, you're under a whole new set of rules? Uh, yeah, that was in the, the previous report. And my biggest question is, why do we want to save it? Did you get a nice railroad station over there? I'm not advocating that we do. Maybe Linda could be a better advocate for that than I could. Well, actually, I did a, a quote I have. The 40-year um, director of the Vermont Preservation Trust recently passed away. And this was one of his comments about the very question, why do we want to pres preserve things in the town? And I know that that building's in not good shape, but you've got to have something in your town. Um, when we preserve and revitalize our historic buildings and village centers, we breathe life into the soul of communities and create the special gathering places where we come together in service to something greater than ourselves. It might be I mean, some places, but not here. So you've got a building over there, you've got this school building here. I've been under that building, I've been up in the attic, and it's just not worth the time and the effort and the money to put into it, because once you fix it, it's just going to sit there. Never get close. Well, the recommendations have been made from the Wilkin Historic Society to move in. Yeah, but the Historic Society doesn't care. All right. Um, well, this is just a presentation of the budget. Um, so we do appreciate it. We do appreciate it in, rewrite, in writing. We do appreciate all the stuff. Um, we do appreciate having this beforehand. Um, any other questions or com conversation on the uh, select board? All right. Well, thank you very much, Linda. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Thank Chad as well, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, copies of the email. Does that, would anyone like them distributed? Uh, no, I just, nope, as long okay. as I know so they're I'm approved. Put this, yep, put this in there. Good. Moving on. And this one goes here. Next is comments from the community. Community. Would either of the members present, <laughs> Let, or Kurt, uh, like to have the floor? No. Kurt, Robert, Nothing. Monica. No. Okay. All right. I don't know if the camera scared everyone away. But I think I just said it. You you did say it. That was a comment, and you are part of the community. So, um, thank you very much. Uh, next, under new business. Um, Sorry about that. You know, I had something to that. This sort of preservation is good for certain things. But the biggest problem is you're controlled by somebody else when you get rid of no different than when you bought the state gives you money to build a new school. Anything like that. You're under a whole different set of rules. Yeah. But you're under those new set of rules because you get preferential tax treatment. So it's a tit for tat thing. They give yeah. you preferential tax treatment, but they have to make sure that you're not running a bar out of it and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. If the building would be better shape, yes, I could see it. But if you go to the there, everything's wrong. It's totally wrong. It's 
been empty since I've been here. Um, I think historical and meaningful mean two different things to different people too at the same point. In it time. really, it really does have a different, um, a different yeah. definition amongst everybody a lot of people. Everybody has a different look on it, and everybody has different feelings on it. But it's. Uh, Obviously, leaving something that meant something to you for your children, grandchildren, or so on and so right. forth, might mean this to one person and absolutely nothing to another. Because I mean, that building doesn't really mean anything to me because I went to school there. You what? Never went to school there. Right, right, that's what I'm saying. And some of the ones Whereas that some did go to school right. turned into hell just now. Yeah. Or somebody has a burned building. Yep, yep. Yep, and there's countless stories of successes and, you know, struggles with historic preservation. Depends who you're asking. All right, beautiful. So um, if there's no more comments from the community, uh, we're going to move on to new business. Um, first, we'll start with the Canon copier lease expiration. I didn't see anything on that, but maybe I'll see. <coughs> Canon copier. This just fell out. I'm going with that. Yeah, I think that's, well, either redo the lease or get a new machine with a new lease. But uh, I think the Canon guy had a recommendation. Hi, Linda. Robert Shedd from Canon Account Executive said, I spoke with Canon Financial. The lease on your copier is a dollar out lease. The last payment is due March of 2020. When you own the machine outright, you would continue to get service from Canon Solutions. If the machine is working fine, there is not really need for a new one. Your copy volume is pretty low and will last for a long time. Thanks, Marty. Usage last year, as an example, November $137, August 91, May 120, Jan 162. Yeah, because they get charged so much per copy. All right, I'm just wondering. Which it should say. It's not quarterly, the, though. Or and I it's can't not. see. <laughs> it should say in there what they get charged per copy. So the, how long have we owned it? Or how long have they had it? This one says that we can get rid of our machine. I think it means it's very costly and very costly ink cartridges, $20.82. So is the option to every three weeks let re lease continue a lease or to buy it? No, you're going to own it outright at the end of that next payment. In March, we own it. Yep. So what's the what's the question? So do you want to keep it and own it, or do you want to lease a new one that's covered by all of the warranties and the um, maintenance and everything? Because once you own this one, they're not going to cover any of that anymore. Can you, do you have any uh, mind of sight to the price difference between? 2015. No, because it's the. $2,500 um, for, for a Canon printer like that we have used. To lease it? No, to buy it. Oh, to buy it. The last one we had was a purchase order from 2015 for $4,055. Which you pay monthly payments on of how much does it say? These are examples of months, but it doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. It's not every month, so it's hard to gauge what months really. No, so, no, yeah, no, but you pay for this monthly, is what I'm saying. Right, but this says the lease on your copy is a dollar out. The last payment's due March of 2020, so you're, then there's all we're you, paying for is. When you lease it, though, your, your, your um, ink is included, and ink is, right. those machines, is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Right. So... And this is usage last year. you that you're using one every three weeks right there. Didn't you just read something about Well, that's... Oh. Here we go. Sorry. <laughs> the town's five-year lease on the copier will be up in March. When the copier maintenance so man came years. in a short while ago, I asked his opinion whether to extend the lease or get a new lease. Highly recommended a new lease. The copier is getting old and will start having more repair issues. Extending yeah. contracts usually cost more than a new one because of that reason. Leasing a copier was Eric and Belinda's idea. They agreed to add an amount of fund balance each year to office equipment fund to pay for it. We add 5000 to that fund in June. Having that fund allows the town to replace broken office equipment mid-year when it doesn't appear as a budgeted item and creating deficit in the department's budget. We will have to upgrade most computers to Windows 10 this year and possible upgrade computer for emergency management. My computer is having issues by just shutting down. All right. So right. this we've read before. Yes. 
So either you're going to turn in the copier that you have that's sitting in here in March and sign a lease for a new one, but it doesn't or you're going to leases. keep this one and take all responsibility financially for anything that goes wrong with it or any of its, I believe, ink. Right. Because I don't think that all of that is free once you... Right. And so the issue it. is we don't know what the cost of a new lease is because we don't have anything. It's in there. No. It was last time. No, everything's from 2015. Remember, we found, we found yeah. yeah, there's either, a new one in there. Yeah. 2015. Either, I wouldn't, if it's I wouldn't the same file, that, Jen I and I found the new one. one. I'd, spend, I'd either buy one for 40 bucks. No, you wouldn't take the new, old one. Or yeah. I'd get a new, or I'd lease. It's either yeah. upfront money or, or yeah. by monthly. That's probably so, about the same. 2015. Right. Yeah. You just don't own it. 2015, 2016. We don't know the numbers now. They might have taken it out. I know there was a new one in there when Jen and I last looked There's, at it. This is from October 2019, so this is at least earlier. And everything else is 2015 in here. Everything else is from 2015 in there. Uh, please see the attached proposals. One for color option. Nope, this is 2015. I'm sorry. What does is, what is the October say? Right here. Hi, Linda. I apologize. And it looks like you have really good pricing. I don't think we can help you right now given the remaining payments on your current lease. So this isn't accurate. This isn't up to date either because we have remaining payments on our lease here. This is from October of 2019. No, I understand that, but does it tell you what the lease on a new one would be? What is that, 95? Our monthly lease would be 90 to 95 a month, but the maintenance agreement will come in per color print and per black and white. Which print. this is what this is what you pay. But we don't know what, what No no, no I'm just print. saying it would be yeah. this on top of I'm assuming. Yeah, but we're assuming. Yeah, no, I'm I don't you know. You pay per co per copy used after Right. Oh I understand that as much, but lease. we don't really yeah. know so ninety bucks a month plus enough. plus your copy. Plus your how what do we need to know to make this decision? We need to know. We don't know what the lease is per month for the new one. We need to know the, the cost per month. We need to know how much maintenance per month the new one's going to be as opposed to just well, the Well, you won't know because it goes by per copy. So right, but if we're doing the same copies and they're cheaper because the ink is cheaper, then we can have an idea, right? Or but is that that's what That's why she telling? gave that, that summary of how much she's using. You this is just, this is one, two, three, four random months from the last year. I know, but that's an average of what see she's using for copies. So you take that and you figure out how much um, that you're using and that how much is costing. And you add it to the $90. So, yeah, so what are we looking to get here? Because it doesn't... So probably we should have Linda speak with this gentleman, choose the model that she would like. And let us know how much a month it would be. Let us know how much it would be a month to lease it. What the potential savings what, would what be per copy. What the cost per copy is and what the cost of ink is when it is our responsibility. Yeah, let's write that down so we can remember that. Need it to make an informed decision. Exactly right. So we need to know what the cost per month for a new copier is. Well, she needs to pick out a model first. Cost per month yep. for appropriate model. Sure. The office expenses. The monthly expense for the new model. Eight hundred and fifty-nine dollars. It's already. It's on your P and L. What's that? It's in the P and L. It's how much she spent on. Office for the models. year, to date, right? Yeah. I don't think that's copier. All right, so the new so one. Per month for a model. <laughs> the cost the per new for, for copy for the new model compared to the old one. I think there's a section for copier lease, but I'm, I don't know that to be fact. Jen, I apologize. I can't see right now. Let's show you. Yeah. Um, and then the cost per ink for Hopefully the new model, soon. which seems to be the big concern for the old one. Right, so we want to know the cost per ink for the old model so we can compare, right? To the new one. So you need both. You know. the, the old one we have. The old one says... Your new lease will give you a lease payment. But again, this, this it will give you a per copy payment. Right. Per copy. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And you can ask it's an yeah. for the ink cost. Okay. Yeah. And then everything else we have in here is from 2015, including this twenty dollars and eighty two for ink every three weeks. That's from twenty fifteen. So we really don't know. Okay. Okay. Tabled. I'd like to make a motion to table the Canon copier. By Richard. All those in favor say I made a motion to table the Canon copier. Um, but but let's let's put some action items out there so we can drive it. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and do this.
Uh, so there's a motion on the floor. It was seconded. So let's suspend the motion or postpone the motion until we get the action items done, and then we'll. The action item would be for Linda to pick right. the copier that she wants and get us the information on it. Okay, proceed. So I'd like to make the motion to table the Canon copier agenda item pending the motion or pending the action item for Linda. I'll second that. By Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, great. Um, under new business, being that we're meeting uh, really soon, I would like to um, suggest that we do a candidate night. It was mentioned in one of our previous meetings. If we're going to have people running for town clerk, um, and if people are interested, I don't know if it would be a success or a failure, but I want to throw that idea out there if people would like to think about it. Um, Could we use it for any candidate? Any, anyone. Just, well, we need a dog. Some select we need board select board, up. dog warden. Yep. Um, that brings me to the second. I, think, I still think we should put an ad in the paper by reaching out to all the committees and boards and different um, everyone else involved and then put in an ad in the News and Citizen prior to town meeting day, letting people know that word, not everyone picks up and reads the town report, right? So if we put in an ad in the paper saying the municipality of Woolkit is looking for or will be electing, blah, 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 um, that might be able to help round out a schoolhouse restoration committee or a development review board or something like that. So those are just ideas I want to put out there under new business. Um, Moving on is, oh, the resolution supporting completion of rail trail, that's going to be tabled um, pending Eric's a action item. Um, eviction proceeding town property on East Hill Road. I did receive a will kit from, uh, an email from Tim. Um, the tenant uh, refused service of his, uh, <laughs> he refused service of his summons or of whatever the official document was. Um, so now they're looking um, to have a judge possibly kick, uh, make the judge make a motion to kick the tenant out. Um, we might have to sign the letter. Uh, we're still talking about that right now, myself and Tim. It's not a quick process. Um, so I guess, um, Deb, if you wouldn't mind just doing an action item for Eric to follow up with Tim regarding the eviction. Uh, loan bids for road repairs. Loan flooding. Okay. Other bids yep. So Community Bank did not wish to bid, and then Community National Bank did bid. Um, People's United did not wish to bid, and then the Union Bank did wish to bid. Um, Union Bank's interest rate was lower at 2.15% to Community National, which was 2.35%. Annual savings of roughly $379 a year. This is a $250,000 loan for five years. Can I make a motion to accept the Union Bank's can, can I ask a question real quick? Mm -hmm. Do we give any business to Community National Bank ever? Have we? No, usually Union Bank comes in, and Linda would tell you Union Bank. My only thought is, is maybe if we gave a little bit of business to some other bank besides Union Bank, that we might get a better rate. Down the road. Down the road. Especially at an only 300 bucks difference. But that's just a thought. Comment on that one. I don't think you can get a better rate. No? Oh, okay. And, uh, I just, it was just a thought. Then, then you're pushing Union Bank, and they may say, well, you want to shop around somewhere else? Okay. Then we'll get to know you. Maybe. Or they might say, hey, we want you back. Let's but they, they, you, they always give you a do this something. Yeah, it was just a thought. I didn't know. Nope, nope. Uh, that's a Versus having all our ducks business. in one basket. Yep. That, that's, uh, I could see both sides of that. I've never dealt with Community National. I don't even, where is Community Is that the National? old People's, is that the old People's, People's, Which one? People's Bank where is, is community either Community National or, Bank or Community North National. The, the, you remember the People's Bank? Yeah, or is it, it by the, uh, or is it by the Charlemont, or is it the one right yes, next to Kinney Drugs? Community Bank is by the Charlemont. It's by the Charlemont. 
Well, this says Community Bank and Community National Bank. Okay. <laughs> there's, two, there's two different ones, though. Right? Oh, that's yeah, what I'm trying to figure out. Ones. Yeah. One's the old people's. There's community Bank in Hardwick is different than Community Bank. Oh, okay. Down here. Oh, I didn't so realize community that. Community Bank down here is associated, actually, the head office in Newport. Oh, I didn't realize that. So I second Jen's motion. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay, um, so motion was made by Jen. There was a second by Mike to take Union Bank's loan um, for 2.15%. Um, for It's a $250,000 loan over five years at 2.15% for a total annual payment of $53,270.80. Motion made by Jen, second by Mike. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, beautiful. Excuse me, what's this money for? Uh, this is the... Um, the FEMA repairs, 2019, this is North Wilkie Road. Um, so this has Community Bank here. Um, and Community Bank is on Kennedy Drive in South Burlington for their um, mailing address. And then Community Nationals up in Newport on US Route 5. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a thing. Yeah, and... and they're not local then. They're all getting yeah, nationalized. Yeah, that's the thing. They're all getting there's nationalized. Right, but there is a community Great. national in Marshville. I think it's at the Charlemagne. Posting a video at select board meetings. I'd like to go ahead and invite Kurt to say anything sure. if you'd uh, like to have the floor. As you can see, we're set up. And um, the way that this, this is working is that um, I don't know if you've seen Hyde Parks or Johnson's or, or anybody else's. Uh, video of select board meetings. <coughs> but when this is completed, um, uh, Vermont Access TV does some editing and they'll put in the agenda items so as somebody's looking through it, they will be able to see the agenda. Um, the file will then get posted to YouTube. So YouTube will be the, the free storage for, uh, for the video. What we'd like to do is to put a link on the Woke Up website so the users, just like now they go to read the minutes for a particular meeting, they can click on uh, the video. And what that does is a, a, it links to the uh, YouTube site and it comes up and, and runs. Uh, in order to do that, I think we need the select board's approval to have a link put on the website. I make a motion to have a link put on the website uh, that redirects to YouTube, which shows our select board. I'll second that motion. All right, motion made by Michael, second by Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> nice. Okay, great. So I have two quick questions. Um, number one, no red dot on that camera? Is it a red dot? Yeah, like so I know when it's recording or not? Oh, well, it's, it's the, I guess the red dot's on this side, but it is, yeah. Okay. And then um, it officially goes live when I introduce the time in the meeting and stuff like that as far as microphones and what hits that's YouTube, it, right? That's when it gets turned out. Right, so no small talk conversation right. beforehand picked up by soft mics? No. Okay. No. Cool, I just want to make sure that people or not infringe to have a personal conversation prior to starting the meeting. And then Get on YouTube. An, a, another important point is when you go into executive session, um, yeah, I was talking to some of the, the camera guys from other towns. So typically the towns will do executive session at the end. Mm -hmm. And so this gets packed up and, and leave. We'll leave prior to executive session really kicking off. Okay. Great. Yeah, I mean, take. Typically we do it at the end, and then if anything, it's just one motion, typically nothing after that anyway. Yeah, I think the only thing that's a little bit of a pain is you probably want to have your executive session in the Lister's room, because yep. this takes 20 minutes to take down. Okay. And you don't want to wait for that, right? Right, so, right. They got a little camera in there. Yeah. Hey, who knows? <laughs> Tom's had bad experiences in there too, you never know. I know where his bad is. Um, anyway, so, perfect. Any other discussion? Anyone have anything to say regarding the select board meeting? So this will not be on their closed circuit television as far as I'm concerned. It just to be a YouTube link, correct? It's just a YouTube link. Well, is not in the, uh, uh, in the broadcast area. Right. So the only way to access it in WOOCUT is <coughs> online. Okay. 
Wonderful. Do we know what the title will be on YouTube? Will it be just a generic? Oh, good question. Right now, I've created a, a, a uh, an account called Woka. Okay. And the reason for doing that is you want to have multiple uh, administrators. So if somebody you know falls off or needs needs something on vacation or whatever, somebody else can come in and administrate it. We'd like to give that password to Green Mountain. TV, because they do the edit, then they post it. Right. And will comments be on for this? I'm sorry, comments? Comments, yeah. Will people be able to comment below the video? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. You mean like on a, like on a web page? Right, not the view only. Right, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. yeah this stuff this is all crazy. stream. It's just streaming. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, it's all new to me, so thank you very much. Thanks for all your work on that. Um, perfect. No other conversation. We could go ahead and move on uh, to engineering services for the Brook Road repairs. This is payroll, payroll, yeah, payroll. I, uh, I had emailed on December 26. I, can, I brought it up anticipating this. I could read it. But it's from our engineer, Joey Wilson, mm -hmm. who was recommended by Tyler, mm -hmm. right? And um, it says, he said, please see attached concerning the washout on a North Wilkin Road according, across from the intersection with four-wheel drive. But this says Brook Road. That's not the same road. Yeah, that says Brook Road repairs. That's, uh, Brook okay. Road was Tyler. All right, so I'm not sure what that's about. Okay. But we do, I, you know, this brings up that we do have to discuss this. Lucian was pushing me to make a decision on this tonight whether we want to do it or not. This is a temporary repair? Yeah, this is um, a temporary repair. This is the culvert replacement and upgrade project. Um, so I'll just continue reading, it's just one little paragraph. As for the other areas Lucian and I reviewed, we can provide as much or as little engineering as you feel is necessary for the sites. It appears the Agency of Natural Resources has already provided you stabilization guidance. So, um, uh, the culvert replacement and upgrade project, we can provide the following services. Topographic existing condition survey and drainage rate and existing conditions plan, which is $3,000. And then a study to properly size a new culvert, which is $3,000. And we're going to have to do it. The question is, do we want to do it this year or do we want to do it next year? And this wasn't the one where, we, where they were concerned about the safety? No. Okay. No. That is the job that the construction folks are working on right now. Right. Okay, yeah. perfect. Which is where? The, it was four-wheel drive. Road. That was the four, or across the four-wheel drive. No, that's oh, this. Oh, that's that. Okay, yeah. sorry. Well, that's Whatever. where the excavator is right now. The is at the bottom of four-wheel drive. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I'm not sure how Brook Road got into it. Okay, so... Let's just table what we don't know what we're talking about. Well, the Brook Road is referenced in the minutes from the 18th. Okay. Under the paragraph, under, uh, the second paragraph under additional budget proposals. And Lucian said he wanted to engage the services of an engineer to address repairs on the Brook Road. That's got to be this. Yeah, but that. That's got to be. No, that's got to be four-wheel drive, roads. right? That's yeah, got to be four-wheel drive. Be right, that's four-wheel drive, which we did. Well, if that's the case, then your minutes are incorrect, and then we'll need to be fixed. And your agenda will have to be fixed to reflect four-wheel drive. Well, we're having a special meeting, I think, next no, Wednesday, no. Yep. so we can I, just push I do, this. I do think we should table it, because I think Kimberly's absolutely right, because in this paragraph here, it should read, Lucian, and I want to check this, though, we should, recheck, we should recheck the table. Lucian would like to engage the services of an engineer to address repairs on, and then it says Brook Road. That should be four-wheel drive. Lucian was told to check with the engineer providing services on the North Wilkett Road, Tyler Billingsley, yeah. Brook Road, for a quick estimate of the scope of services, but then Tyler said, no, you have to use Joey. 
Right, because we reached our ten thousand dollar with limit. Tyler. Right. Okay. So that's how all that. Yeah, yeah. It does seem happened. like there's some confusion. Okay. So therefore, you shouldn't have approved your minutes. So what we December have to do 18th. is we have to we have to remotion approving the minutes from December eighteenth. Then we have to table that till our next meeting, and then we have to table agenda item Brook Road Engineering Services to our next meeting as well. Yeah, it's not critical, so it's nope. not like... Nope, not so let's just make a couple, let's just tidy this up real quick. So I'd like to make a motion to um, rescind the motion to accept the minutes from December 18th, 2019. Second. Uh, by Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'll I, make... I didn't vote because I wasn't here. Okay, perfect. So I'd like to make a motion to table the minutes from December 18th to our next meeting to be determined. Second. By Michael. All those say aye. 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 Okay, perfect. So that cleans that part up. I would like to make a motion to table engineering services for Brook Road repairs till our next meeting to be decided. Second. By a my waiting clarification of the which date to be decided, I should be saying. No, but I'm saying a waiting clarification on which road you're really talking about. Exactly. Right? Yep. Yep. And then uh, for our next meeting, which the date is still to be decided. So I'll amend that motion to say. I would like to table engineering services for Brook Road repairs pending the gathering of information uh, regarding the correct roads till our next meeting, which is date to be decided. Second. By Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, Quick, just a quick discussion amongst the board. Should we do number 10 review correspondence and then get into budgets after so we could just do budgets and then we'll be done with I, I have no preference. I'm sorry, what did you say? Should we do number 10 review correspondence first now and then we can do number nine budgets after and then that way we could just do our budgets and when we're done, we're done. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to do, to amend the agenda to do number 10 review correspondence uh, prior to number nine, budget and appropriations for 2021. I'll second that motion. By Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Perfect. So let's go ahead and bump number 10 up. Uh, first is we have the Sheriff's Department December report. There's a link on our website for it. Everyone's more than welcome to look at it. Um, 21 ticket warnings, which doubles Hyde Park and is eight more than Johnson's with four traffic tickets written and one arrest. Everything else you can pick through if you'd like. Um, VLCT, passive grants and scholarships. We received an email, everybody. Um, this is reimbursement rate for um, any uh, anything we would invest that would reduce the potential for workman's comp property order or liability claims. Um, I don't know if we could have used this to do all the stuff that they gave us on our, um, our uh, uh, safety report that they gave us for our eye washing station and first aid kits. Um, everyone has this in their inbox, please just read it. No action needs to be taken. Um, VLCT town meetings and trainings. We have this as a card. We are going to offer model. Oh, this is our um, town meeting. This is our yeah, this is, tighten up for town meeting day. I was thinking that that would have been the one to go to. Yep, they were all in January and February, so we can go ahead and that would have been. That would have been. I actually emailed v, VLCT January after I got that. Gone by. Right. It, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, but oh, I'm sorry. January. I emailed her because they're all on Wednesdays and there's none for any working professionals oh, without you. having to take time off. And she said she would forward my concerns to VLCT, in which I've never heard back. No. I know yeah, when Wednesday's who's an definitely attorney. Don't work. A whole day on Wednesday they want us to do, and yeah. I would love to do a training, but even as giving a whole Saturday would be easier for me. Vermont Department of Taxes. Oh. Unopened. Received December 24th. Oh, this is our equalization study. So our CLA is down 95.51. We were right up at 100% last year. And our COD is 12.4. If anyone could hit on that, it would be Deb, who's our, who's an, our 
one of our town listers. Um, the CLA is called the common level appraisal, and that measures what your properties are selling compared to what they're assessed for with your town lister. So if the listers have something assessed for $100,000, it's currently selling for $95,510. This is set through um, uh, formulas by the state. Uh, but it does. Once we get so far out of whack with one of these numbers, it causes a uh, reappraisal because our grand list numbers don't reflect what the market rate is actually doing. It's a really interesting thing, and it's hard to explain in just a couple of sentences. Uh, would you mind um, having the, this scanned and emailed to the select board as an action item, Deb? So uh, the board of listers, select board, school board, and superintendent all got one because it affects tax rates for the school board as well. It says um, CLA below 85 or over 115 mm -hmm. assessed. Yeah, tax once rate. it gets so far out of whether you're appraising property too little, not getting enough taxes, or too high, getting too much taxes from your taxpayers, yeah. depending on who you are. It seems like the target is 114%. <laughs> you're ripping your tax payers. I mean, well, it depends who you're talking to. Uh, all right, perfect. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, Department of Health has trainings. Mm, it's just a general town officer, um, town officer health training. Town health officer training. Town health officer training. Uh, winter 2020. It's going to be held in Bennington, White River, St. Albans, uh, or online. It's a three-hour training in person. Online, it's a two-hour training. Why don't you get a copy of that? Deb, if you wouldn't mind doing action, I'm to um, get Bernard a uh, copy of the town health officer training. He has it already. He and Tom have talked about the St. Albans Nice. Wednesday, March 4th, 1 to 4. Beautiful. So here we have it says a lady dropped this off. Wanted to me to give it to you in case you wanted them to clean up the fallen tree in the big parking lot that's been there for a few weeks. And it's a land management logging company card. Um, what big parking lot? Deb, do we know which parking lot this refers? Which big parking lot this refers to? Or which big tree? Um, it is an interesting thing because I would like to know how the fields up on North Wilkie Road are ever going to get cleaned. Yeah, those are really <laughs> it bad. It's a mess. It's pushed all the way up to the backstop for that softball field and stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's scary. Um, I think. Um, Pending any action item, I think we should at least keep uh, their cards on file. What company is it? Primo's Land Management and Logging Company. Uh, John and Mike Primo, uh, P-R-E-M-O, are out of Hardwick, Vermont. And it has, um, I'll just give you an office number of 802-917-2031. And we'll just put that in the minutes if we ever want to dig it up. I know where it is. Uh, it is good of them looking for business. I appreciate. I like that. Good thing you could just take a motor and just push the trees back. Uh, yeah. Until you get to the river, then the yeah. state will come and get and you. And then you're not allowed. <laughs> um, it is. It is a conversation that's going to have to be had. Um, I don't know what I do. I clip. Okay. Perfect. So. At this point, I believe we are ready to take our dive into the budget. Did you do all the amendments you did, right? Yep, because the rest of the amendments are all going into the budget conversation, which is an umbrella conversation. Um, so, you know, how and when and where we start was all pretty arbitrary as far as that goes. Um, 707, do we want to take a minute break to stretch our legs or do we want to just keep hammering through it?
I have to go very soon, so you probably want to keep going. Let's keep hammering through it before Kimberly has to go. Mike, if you want to, if you want to bring up what is most important to talk to Kimberly about. Yeah, well, um, we need to start. So time is short. Uh, we need to start getting line items in the budget, and I don't expect the board to make motions to accept this, but I'd like some some guidance on what numbers to put for the planning and zoning budget, the right. list and the listers budget, and then Jen's going to talk about the town clerk's budget, and that's probably a good bite-sized chunk for tonight. So the 2020 planning and zoning budget last year was 10500 right? This year is proposed 12875 of that, five hundred dollars of that twelve thousand eight seven five is Tom asking for a raise. All the other costs are basically fixed. We have legal services going from six hundred to a thousand, which makes good sense. We all know Nimric hit us with a big fee, so the computer annual fees are going from four hundred to two thousand. Nothing we can do about that. So the only debate in my mind is the hourly rate. Tom is currently making 18 an hour for the zoning administrator. He's asking for 20, um, which would uh, which would bring the total uh, budget line item to 12,875, which is a 22% increase, but nothing really besides the hourly rate that's in our control. So, what's your pleasure? And how many hours a week does, is the budget for the, for the, this, how many hours have you worked for this? That's a good question. I don't have how many hours are here, but I think that's on the list of um, what who makes 8,500 is the salary last year divided by 18 is roughly 475 hours. Yes, so he's usually here Wednesdays from the Yeah, so that Eight makes hours a week. how long so have we been paying six hours a week? Range? For zoning? So that's a $24 increase of pay period. $24 increase of pay period. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know the answer. So I remember we, we finally put it through. Can I see the clip? What was um, your question, you, Richard? Uh, how long are we at, he's at his current pay rate? It's only been a few months. But he got a raise last year, I believe. Yep. Yeah. For listing, right? I think for zoning, too. Did he? I'm sure everyone did. Okay, no. So we're talking. So we're talking about the raise, two dollars an hour, for eight hours a week. So that's six hours. Six hours a week. So that's twelve dollars a week. Where he's looking for twelve dollar a week raise. So that comes to twenty four twenty four dollars a pay period. So he makes eighteen right now for zoning. Yes. Yep. So I'll make a motion to accept the proposed budget. No motion. Oh. Or, oh, sorry, sorry. I withdraw no. the motion. No, we're just having we're having conversations because we we're in quorum. Right. We don't want to make a motion. What we're going to do is because uh, the motion will tie our hands with the final budget. Mm -hmm. But I want agreement, like like this. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So what I'm else? Right. What else? What other budgets? Wait. Okay. Oh, so we have agreement to put twelve thousand eight hundred seventy-five as a line item for that. Yes. Um, considering the computer expenses and something we can control. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Great. The second budget is the Lister's budget. Um, so, how do, I, how do I present this to you? You all have it, right, in front of you? So, um, Deb is currently making fourteen twenty-eight. Okay. 
and Tom is making 17 for list. So the current budget, with all the computer expenses, right, there's another $1,200 in computer expense. That's the Nimric thing as well. It's divided over the two. Uh, they up their mileage, uh, $300, trivial. Um, the salary increase they're looking for is $2,700. Um, so once again, Deb, our junior lister is making 14, I forgot what it said, 14.28, and Tom, our senior lister, is making 17. Deb has requested 16, and Tom has requested 20. Um, just for some perspective, um, scri our scribe makes $15.6 an hour. So, to me, 16 seems reasonable. I sent out the average, the state average for listers, and it was 15 and change, right under 16. So that seems reasonable to me. Anyway, yeah. um, Tom going from 17 to 20 seems less reasonable to me. Um, but I would propose 18 for Tom. And if you were to accept that proposal, the final budget, so, so what's being proposed now, $16 an hour for Deb and $20 an hour for Tom, is a 19% increase for the Lister's budget, but that's with the Nemeric and the mileage too. If we were to put Deb to 16 and put Tom to 18, it would be a 15.5% increase. It would bring the budget down, the proposal down from 26,336 to 25,184. I like the... Uh your counter proposal. Yeah, 16 and 18. <coughs> Agreed. <coughs> you know, I would like to get on the record and say that. We're talking, wait, right, we're okay. We're yep. talking 1,584 dollars. Right, no, and I'm just speaking to the process of okay. just writing raises into your budget. And I think the select board, even if we do allow this into this budget, I think we should really start moving away from that. Yeah, we've been last year we got poor process. Last year we got caught up and we thought we brought everyone up to par and here we are giving everyone more money. And um, I just I, I need to speak to hating the process. I really do. I think it's completely backwards and it doesn't serve the municipality correctly. I agree. These things are a conversation and we've adopted a merit, but we have no one to administer that. Nope. We have no one in this town. That I agree with as well. It. Yep. That so I agree with as well. That's the problem. But at the same point in time, we can't keep falling back on that. The fact point that we taken. don't have point someone taken. to do it and then just keep shoveling out money. Right. Uh, the last raise we gave up, the individual quit. So you like the proposal of 16 and 18 yeah. or a budget of 25, 184. Did we bring Tom up to par for his lister last year yeah. with his budget? Yes. And that was more than the 2% raise that everyone else got in town or what we subscribed to pre previously, right? Correct. So how many hours is he, did you know how many hours he's working as a lister? 12. 12 a week. Mm -hmm. So it's 576 hours each a year. I mean, I, I could live with bumping town from 17 to 18, but I'm... Um, done with the process so I could live with it I could live with it because it's a nominal cost not because I agree with the process agree yeah. how about that Agreed. all right because it doesn't cut out of our budget and it doesn't prevent him from getting his job done but I just don't agree with the fact that I've never worked in a job where people come in and just demand raises to get them. that's all so what we're saying is we agree in theory, for 16 for Deb, 18 for Tom, or a line item total of 25,184 for the new listers budget. I could agree with that reluctantly. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh. Sorry about that, Monica. Wasn't paying attention. My apologies. I'd like to point out that you are approving a budget from next July to the July after. You are not. You are not approving the raise. You are not discussing the raise. You're budgeting for the 
for that money. In the event that one of your listers or both of your listers were to go away, you would no need to fill that position. And so it seems to me you need to budget for any eventualities that might happen. So you are not committing them to a raise, you are budgeting for it. Yep, exactly. Last time Tom came in and got his raise, and so we'll speak with the listers in the zoning when when it's appropriate, or actually you should say that select board will, because it'll be them. Mm -hmm. Two of us are up for re-election. All right, so Great. perfect, next. One last thing. Okay. This historic preservation budget recommendation. Ah, oh, this is how I was looking for this. Right. Do we want to go ahead and create a historic preservation commission? Shouldn't they create one first? Well, if it's to be an official commission, as outlined here, it's got to be, you know, a, we have to make it. Can we put it? On but we don't the, have to do it now. I was just button. bringing it up. Can we put it on the docket in March of the town vote on whether they want to Certainly. do that? I, I actually wouldn't mind it being an article if they want it. I don't know. I mean, to again, this, this, was in our, this was in our inbox at 6 a.m. today. So, not a lot of time to sort of digest. Right, well, setting up um, the Historic Preservation Commission lets the process proceed and it's fairly benign. I could, yeah. I could go as far to say is I would, I would yeah. be all right with forming the Historic Preservation Commission with the, the $1,000 that would get them their two grants and kind of pumping the brakes even. I would, I would put that as the article for the town to decide whether they want, a, they want the $1,000 they want to match the two five hundred. The article would be, do you want the next step for the town to decide would be, do you want to go forward with this, make a commission and and as well as don't have the five hundred and five hundred dollars. Well, that steps. speaks to that speaks to Robert's concern about who is and who is isn't interested in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. If you make it a bud a ballot item and people roll out and make it their choice. They can choose. I'm sorry? I think it's better the more we leave to the public, period. Absolutely, absolutely. And we have been conflicted with this whole thing the whole time we've been. And you know, but people are looking at I mean, I'm looking at it like this. This is one more tax thing we're going to have to pay. Well, exactly. Uh, we see the struggles. We see the struggles with the TA. I saw the struggles with the wastewater committee because they thought they thought I was leveling a tax on them, you know. That whole thing was a you know, it was it was scary to see the way people react. So um it almost sounds like this might need to just be tabled only for further discussion on how to make it an article. Cool. All right. Um and then we could I mean it sounds like everyone's on board for at least the one thousand to match for their grants. Um, in the spirit of what we're talking about. Um, matching money for grants isn't so bad. Um, it sounds like everyone's on board with letting the town decide if they want to form a historic preservation committee. I would never say letting the town decide is a bad idea. Okay, so was the action item to email Linda and Chad, or is Chad right out there talking in the hall? No, um, he's still in his meeting. He's still in his meeting? Okay, so an action item would be for someone to email Linda and Chad regarding the fact that we're looking into making this in uh, an article for the for the community to vote on. Uh, Who creates and, and does the articles? The agenda is something that we will be setting before the twenty eighth or the the um, uh, right. The I'm warning. Just that. The warning. Thank you. Sorry, I'm running. I'm running. I'm running stuff. So. Slide warning. We, we, we put it in, right. It's up to us, but we have until our final day prior to the 28th. The other way, the we should have the draft warning already. Petition up and get signed by certain voters, then you have to put that into your campaign. Right. So if we accept this as presented, then we have to put it in. Where is it? Do you have your town meeting book with you still? I do. Um, okay. Here's the two differences, right? If I we, thought Deb was. I was more asking, like, who actually, who, who, because didn't you send out an email to us today that said that we need to make a decision? Somebody sent out an email that said we need to make a decision about what articles we're going to. 
Right, and this is this is an example so of that. So here's those, here's 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 the difference. Just so we could just put in the visuals. If we do it with the way they're presenting it, it becomes yep. one of these numbers, yeah. and so it gets lumped into all of this, which all gets voted in as one. Oh, we want okay. it as an individual. Now, if we do it as an individual, we can ask if people want to form the committee and are they willing to give the one thousand dollars for the matching grants? Yeah, I say we do it like that. That's just what the discussion is right now. Okay. If we do it the other way, I mean, their numbers would be 9,500 in this, which gets yeah. voted on as one article along with Red Cross, basic, you know, council on aging, and that's an, unless someone makes it, you know, speaks about it, opens it up, questions it, blah, 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 blah. So, as I was saying, Richard, the difference is, is that if we take it as presented, it'd be a $9,500 item under Article 8 in this which would be voted upon with all of this. If we make it its own article, then it would be, shall the voters appropriate $1,000 or, you know, and to establish and for grants, however we would decide to work. That's yeah. the difference. No. Um. Okay, cool. So, does someone have an action item to do that? Oh, was there? Oh, we got one here, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was faced this way. <laughs> I don't know what he said. So. I would say that before you you alter the wording as it is, that you definitely talk to Chad. Oh yeah. No, this discussion it is. It seems good. reasonable to put it in as requested. If they've gone through the effort to put that together, I'm guessing that they would like to have the whole thing. Yep. And thank you for your comment. The board is going to continue this conversation with Chad and Linda and just decide how they would like to move forward. Um, you as well had one, didn't you? Were both hands up? Okay, sorry. All right. Um, next, Michael. Uh, TC, town clerk. That's Jen's. Deb, what did you send about the articles? Did you send an email about the articles? Did Allison. Or did Allison? No, I just know that when I sent the agenda. Okay. Oh, that's that we needed to make a decision about articles or something. So well, it was something to do with the sheriff's budget. Yeah, I filled it out from. Yep. Yeah, and then I said I did to be included in the. Perfect. Yep. Okay. So it wasn't a deadline. It was just that was a. Well, there is a deadline. Yeah, there's so. definitely what, a deadline. Oh, there's definitely a deadline. Yeah. Have to have everything scanned the publisher. Be before the 28th, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we now can start filling in. Well, at least at least this is just from last year. Oh, that's right. last year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so I guess now we're going to go to Jen. Yeah. So here's some extra copies if anybody's interested. So these are just. You know, hold you hold on to that. Mike and I met with Linda on Friday, and. We just kind of um, talked through a few different options that might be um, something to consider as we look at putting together the town clerk budget. So just a few points. The first page, so currently 2019, Linda, who's been the town clerk for 32, I think it's 32 years. Mm -hmm. So she's currently making, as a town clerk salary, $6.58 an hour. Recording fee is something that is um, in addition to the town clerk salary, and that over the last couple of years, she says this has been about $14,000, so that equals about $8.41 an hour. So. She makes $15 an hour doing the town clerk salary. So that's $15 an hour, town clerk, 32 years. Treasurer is something that she also does, and she makes $13.17 an hour for that. So in total, the 32-year veteran, town clerk, makes $28.17 an hour. So my proposal is that we are hiring somebody who will have zero town clerk experience. So my thought is that it, she said she works about 34 hours. 
So a couple options would be taking um, a, the, new, the new town clerk at a lower rate, upping her hours to 40 hours a week, budgeting for that at a lower rate. Um, there's also, a, you can also include those recording fees into, instead of a line item, you can include those recording fees into their hourly rate. Um, and of course, on the front page, there's, there's pros and cons to that. So that would be a decision that you'd have to kind of think about. So for example, if currently total, Linda's making 46878, we could have a town clerk working 40 hours a week um, for about a $4,000 savings, even though she's working the 40 hours. So then there's a few other things that Linda had, had talked about that, that other people had also mentioned, things like having um, a uh, person, a bookkeeper. And so by having that, the second kind of spreadsheet um, is looking at that far, far right. So that would be the town clerk at the lower salary adding, um, if you go down, you're adding the $10,000 for the bookkeeper, which averages about, um, Linda thinks she doesn't have a, this isn't, these aren't like final numbers, these are just kind of estimate. She thinks um, for about $10,000, it would be about four hours a week for a bookkeeper. Um, and so the thought then is that you have an, you've decreased the salary, you've increased the town clerk's hours um, and then my, the other thought was if you're gaining four hours for a bookkeeper and you are in increasing the town clerk hours between six and six and eight you're looking at 12 extra hours so the thought is you would take the budget from the assistant town clerk because the duties that are being are shared already, yes they're already created and so the thought is is you take the assistant town clerk and decrease their hours to 16 hours. So currently the town clerk is working 32 hours a week and you're decreasing them to 16. With the option, one of my options was, well, we decrease her, the t assistant town clerk to 16 and then there's a possibility that the, town, the, the select board, we add to the select board uh, budget eight hours of the person who's working as the assistant town clerk and and have them out of our budget eight hours out of our budget so that that increases the assistant town clerk to 24 hours the only question i have is you said we would decrease to 16. yes because the this is a just a change because with the with the four hours and the six, so you're getting ten to twelve hours. You and my get, assumption is that they're that they're, that they're more skilled. So I thought you, this wasn't. If you decrease it to, to be very honest, to, if you decrease it to sixteen and you add eight for this select board budget, you're not having to pay for the twenty five thousand dollars insurance. The person who who is working now, this is just an assumption. This person with what we we're paying would be eligible for Medicaid, which is a f Cadillac of insurance. Yeah. Um, yeah. If we could all be on Medicaid, it would be a yeah. wonderful thing. Um, so is this column correct? Is this number still correct with 16 instead of 24? Um, probably it would be even less than that. But I did not add the insurance for depending on depending on the insurance for the town clerk. Right, because I'm I'm single minded. I'm yep. after that final number. Yes, yes. Um, but it this was, final number is that eighty four nine oh nine plus, plus a family the plan. Yep. But that's it's even less than that. It now. is even less. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So how do we determine this final number? How do we get this number accurate? Twenty thousand nine oh four. So take sixteen seventy five and uh -huh. multiply it by sixteen. I had 24 in here because I was taking from the select board budget too. Okay. So take 16.75 and how many hours is Are you sick 16? where if I get near you, I'll 16. get sick? 16.75 no, no, times 16. Doctors. Yep. So it's, I can almost, so it's like, yeah. I can 268. Almost okay. <laughs> 268 hours? How many hours? 16.75 times 16. 16. Is All right, that's a 268. Week. That's a week. A week. Yep. So, so times 52. 
Uh, one thousand, thirteen thousand nine hundred and thirty-six. Okay, so this would be thirteen thousand. Got, Got it. Whatever that number is. Nine thirty-six. Instead of the twenty. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Yep. So th those are just um, some thoughts about um, that, and then, um, and then as we were talking about the town administrator, there was um, currently we are budgeting. We are presenting, we've been presented a $10,000 um, budget for Lucian as kind of that, that oversee person, which would, is, has been key, as we all know, has been key over the last, uh -huh. last few months. And um, so the thought was that that 10000 that we are budgeting could become a line item in the town, in the town highway because that we would need a road commissioner, but the town administrator would be would acting. Be, yeah, so that that budget line item would be how you pay for something going it, forward. It'd be our town administrator billing out to the highway department, essentially. And you'd be taking the human. We could also take those human resource activities that are currently being housed inside Linda in the yep, town <laughs> clerk, and and you'd be removing those duties. So those are additional hours taken off to support the maybe decrease in. In. I, I, uh, yes? So I appreciate all your hard work, Jen, very much. Um, a couple of questions, though. So in 32 years, we've never needed an outside bookkeeper for $10,000. Why would we need it now? And you're going to take a brand new town clerk, and you're going to give them less help by decreasing how much they have their assistant? That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, well, the getting... argument was that the, as Deb said last last week, that that person was not able to be alone here. So I'm wondering what what skill set that that person is is bringing in that time period besides administrative. What person's not allowed to be alone here? The assistant town clerk. They're not allowed to be alone here. Or some, or they they well, shouldn't. Yeah, but, you know, they shouldn't be. In the time that Allison's been here, you know, she would not know everything. She hasn't been through an entire cycle of training. And the agreement with the auditor was the recommendation that we have that second that second yeah. piece, that other that person who would be doing um, But that wasn't that if you got a town clerk that didn't already have the experience necessary to teach Allison I would say, for lack of Allison's, a better word, what Belinda used to do. Well, I would just say that that teaching teaching somebody in an administrative assistant position, I don't think you can teach them what a what a accountant. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, I'm thinking four hours of an accountant would be far more efficient than eight hours. No, of an I get assistant. I get that, except for the fact that Belinda used to do all that, didn't she? We've spent a lot of an accounting this year. Well, a lot remember, of an accounting so this year. You get, you get that plus this recording. Why would you're, you, put, you're putting a name on it. Um, we're, we're looking at No, no, no. That's why I said I hate to say a name, but right, I just didn't know. Names. I didn't know how else to, to right. reference right. what Belinda well, used to do. And we're still right. going to have a treasurer, and we're still going to so have to pay that for an accountant. Sure. Your top. assistant Thanks. town clerk Thanks. used to do. There we go. Mm -hmm. Used to do what you're hiring an outside accounting firm to do. She was paid more, but ultimately, and she had more skill. you're going to get more bang for your buck if you have someone come in and train your assistant town clerk at a much lower hourly rate. It's more of an admin position than it would to be to do what this accountant. She, yeah. That that person should their treasurer would still so the treasurer Linda said the treasurer does codes the bills and signs the checks so mm -hmm. the assistant. Assistant is not that. This is the treasurer is getting thirteen dollars an hour to do that stuff. So if you were to actually look at what what the assistant is actually Suppose. doing or supposed to be doing, I think you're going to find that that it's there's maybe some maybe a job description might help because Linda says that the treasurer job. I asked what what does the treasurer's tasks. Mm -hmm. She said codes the bills, signs the checks. And so I said what and Linda is, is the, the treasurer? Yes. 
So I said, what is the assistant? And then the, the what did she say that the, the CPA did? Like what, she, she had us, she, and she said the bookkeeper was the double check and the, and the higher level was, could, do, could do this much quicker and it was much more efficient. Yeah, I forget yeah. the way she put I, it. I forget, I can't They both remember. can't sign the same payroll yeah, orders some, in. Yeah, some, so, yeah, you know, so it's, one of, it's one of those generally accepted. Which is why they've economy. separated between the t treasurer and the assistant. But by taking that stuff off the assistant, which usually takes a lot of time for an assistant to do. You bring in a treasurer. You're putting the assistant into an assistant position that is doing assistant town clerk it, and you're paying work, them and you're paying them this amount that that is um, yeah. certain rates <clears throat> there's certain things that are set the rate is set by the town clerk this town has no correct set, no say on it right certain things that the town clerk does because we went into that before and that's the state rules and that's the salary of the assistant town clerk Exactly. Yeah, I'm kind of. No, you know, which is, is for budget. It's we can part bu of why the, the TA would really bridge we that budget. gap. We, we have a equivalent. Yeah, it's like it. We don't have to budget. We don't have to budget. Yeah, budget. Yeah, the, uh, you guys budget. not down by Vermont Moon Waves because you're putting numbers down that are far below the minimum wage. Yeah, I was just thinking that. That too. I was just thinking about their salary. Their salary positions. Okay, well, you're, we're presenting it as a hourly. Yep, so that people that's, can that's, understand, but it's a salaried position. That might be problematic. I don't know if it's 1096, I believe, now, is the minimum wage in Vermont. It's going to go up, actually. Yeah, it's going yeah, up. It's 15. Yeah, the, I, that yeah. was just so that people understood, as in, because people have an understanding of hourly versus salary. But these are all salary positions. Okay, well, that's a lot of good work, Jen. So the other question is, again, so you're going to give a brand new town clerk an assistant less time than you give a town clerk that's been here for 32 years? I'm going to give, I'm going to, we're going to increase the town clerk hours and give them more, more skilled for more hours at the town level and less assistant. And this person's now going to have the help of that Accountant. And we're still trying. I thought we were trying to have a town administrator because I think this is part of the, oh, yeah. the point it's, here. It's so it's all the divesting not, of services. We're not, yeah, we're looking yeah. at setting everybody up for success, not right. not overburdening the taxpayers for. Yeah, just not trying to tack on an item and make yeah, pay for it. So just so we have some numbers, if okay. we were to accept the plan as written. Mm -hmm. It brings the town clerk's budget with a family plan, because we don't know who the new town clerk is, to 104,828, as opposed to 122,358, which is what it currently is, the current fiscal year, which is a 14.3% decrease. With the potential for more pending the health care option. Uh, right. If our new town clerk doesn't take a family plan, then... Then that gives you more room for their wage. We're, Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I wasn't saying that. But what I was saying, saying the budget, or we, our actuals would be even less than budgeted. Uh, one more tidbit, Linda. Uh, like Jen said, Linda, we we were you know puzzling over this, and Linda is going to request some some money for her to consult to train the new town clerk, which. Uh, makes sense. Lucian's requesting the same thing in the highway, and I think it's a good idea in both instances. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I think something that we should take away from this proposal is that eventually other departments having a line item for the TA is really, could really go a long way. Yeah, no, just and then that way you could really start things. to separate all the eggs from one basket into several baskets, whether it's a half an egg or a whole egg. Yeah, obviously some people are going to use it more. Um, so I'm looking for a final number to put in. We don't have to do it tonight. This has to sink in. This has to, to sink in, but it. this is really good stuff. But how do you get it to print correctly? We I have to have <laughs> the hardest time. <laughs> but time is short, right? We really only have two weeks to, to wrap everything else up. So I think we need a special meeting next Wednesday. Yeah. And at that point, 
we need a we need a number that we feel comfortable with. And then I, I propose that we take this and, and we go punching. through and bump 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 bump. Yeah, that's what um, I think we should do this Saturday. Okay. Saturday. That's oh yeah. outside of quorum, you guys are doing something. Yeah, if anyone's interested, we're gonna get to get oh, oh. well, we can't. We're not interested, yeah. I'll tell you that. Which is why we can never do any of those the team building activities you had suggested because it's completely against statute. On a, re on a retreat, if you're not discussing business, you know, if you're oh. not discussing town business, if you're discussing how you operate. Absolutely, it's a, it's a slippery slope as yeah. far as I understand. You have to self -manage. I went to okay. the uh, PLCT training and they said what kind of retreat do you self-manage on it's usually you, you, you get out of management mode for a little while all right hey look I'm giving everyone one of these this is just a punch list of what we did this year so add stuff strike stuff move stuff around from one month to the other help me fill out the thin ones um, I'll write it all up he, uh, I told um, I told Allison I do it by Monday Monday's a holiday um, this is supposed to be 2019 they have facilitators who will, who will... Oh, who will watch? Oh. No, they will go and work with you. Oh, yeah, see? Um, not that I'm opposed to team building. In fact, people at work always rip on me how much of a team player I am. Because we'll so, get to them. I didn't use my comment from the community, but can I use it now? Oh, no. Please. Absolutely. Yeah. Your employees are the most valuable asset this town has. <laughs> And this board has had a little bit of a troubled record this year with your employees. I would strongly recommend that as you consider this budget moving forward, that you consider fair treatment of your employees moving forward. They are not objects, they are people. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? Or are we think we're all done here? Done. Ladies, jump. January. Look at this. I already have January 8th in here. I'm just going to add more. I'm going to need a... All right. Well, I'd like to make a motion to go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 744. Second. By Richard. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.